Hello, my soccer universe. Um, it's not gonna be one of those cheerful uh, videos. I'm not gonna summarize any games um, today. I just a little bit got triggered today. Today, Liverpool played Chelsea, and Liverpool won two nil. Gonna talk. Um, I'll talk tomorrow in the morning about it in the car. Um, probably will post that video even before uh, this one, but uh, let's see about that. But in the run-up to the game, it was clear that uh, on April 15, 2019 is the 30th anniversary of one of the biggest stadium tragedies. Um, well, I can't remember, it's not the uh, biggest, but I th it might be, at least for professional soccer and the way we see soccer today, one of the most um, impactful. And that's, of course, Hillsborough. And just wanted to share a few personal recollections because um, when I started getting in, in into soccer that was right after the 1990 World Cup and you know this didn't exist I re faintly remember that there was mention of the Hillsborough disaster uh, in some news but you know I was little I didn't really um, remember that uh, during the World Cup, I quickly learned, yeah, English fans are uh, bad. Um, and when I started reading up on soccer, um, this never mentioned, because what I was reading was mostly the history of the World Cup, European Championships. Uh, I didn't really re read up on the leagues, and I was reading mostly about the European Cup. And what I read there was, of course, um, the Hazel disaster between Juventus and Liverpool. Um, which we know now was completely caused by Liverpool's fans misbehaving. And so when I read again a little bit later, I think it was in the run-up to Euro 96 about the Hillsborough Stadium disaster, and that Liverpool fans were again involved, uh, it didn't really register with me. I again thought, oh, hooligans, hool, hooligans, hool, hooligans. It was only a little bit later that um, it came to my attention, yeah, this was a stampede. There was no hooligans involved, but it kind of tells you also that you know the media that I was consuming was mostly German media, and um, to my knowledge, there was not really a German stadium disaster per se. This is an English, or seemed to be an English problem. I mean, there were stadium problems in other countries that I've heard, heard of, but I don't think it's Germany. Germany, and I might be wrong on that, but, but I personally cannot recall now a big stadium disaster in Germany um, so and that was also a little bit always the reporting if you consider German or Austrian media you never hear about big stadium disasters uh, and if it is it's all uh, bad hooligans and all that kind of stuff um, I think the first time I got away. I mean, of course, when you hear Premier League, you need, okay, all see the stadiums now because of the Taylor report and all those kind of things. It just slowly crept up on me. Um, and yeah, it crept up on me that during Euro 96, you play at the Pellet at uh, Hillsborough uh, games. And it was mentioned, yeah, this was this big disaster where uh, 96 people got killed because it was an overfull sector still not much known and especially uh, at that point of view still had this yeah uh, those were animals those people and this was uh, it angers me now because i see i saw it myself when i was um going to soccer games and as a soccer fan you're almost automatically put in a different corner you're not a normal person anymore um and I could share some personal stories from Austria where I think uh, I think things are going wrong, but that will go too far. Now I want to go back to Hillsborough and uh, my personal journey in actually discovering more about Hillsborough. I think the first time I got aware of the problem that was there in England is when I watched actually the English version of the movie Fever Pitch, not the American remake that I never saw with Drew Barrymore and the uh, Boston Red Sox. I couldn't watch it because I saw the original movie, uh, which of course centered around Arsenal. And there's this one scene where they're going to an Arsenal game and they start up there and then moving, 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 moving. moving. It's just overcrowded and uh, you're basically standing together like that, which is basically how it was. 
the second time I was aware that the this pro I'm not saying it was distinct English, but that it was facilitated in England is when I actually saw my first Premier League game, which was Fulham against Derby County in I want to say 2001. We got tickets for Craven Cottage, and I was I, I remember going in at the turnstiles. The narrow entry to that stadium scared me honestly because I've been in full stadiums and it was all I always always appreciate that at least you could get out of those stadiums there was often wide openings you could get, get, get out easily and knowing a little bit yeah that there were stadium disasters in England I thought wow these turnstiles that's a, an excellent way thing to happen then you see the stand and I think it was mostly wood and ah yeah we heard also about the Bradford City fire which you know it all came to a head in a way in the 80s in England. I mean, you had the hooligan problems that were already persisting. You had this a fire that was caused due to negligence of the stadium. And then you had Hillsborough where uh, you had the negligence uh, on the part of the police, uh, which made things uh, worse. But again, didn't register with me. Um, Next time was when I think Liverpool played Juventus in 2005 in the Champions League, which is a clash. You know, it was you could see that in at Anfield uh, when they were when they were playing, the Liverpool fans kind of said, "You know, we are sorry, uh, kind of making it up to Juventus. Yes, we did something bad, but now we know how bad it is, how you must have felt." And of course, the Italian responses. Uh, we want to see blood uh, in, in in a way, so it, it, it didn't leave a happy feeling. But then again, there it was again mentioned, and I got more aware of Hillsborough. When it really, really hit me is, and this was not too long ago, in 2013-14, um, I bought a book in uh, Bulgaria, an English uh, English book about because because you know I thought I've been reading a lot about Italian soccer I've been uh, reading about uh, Spanish uh, you know all kind of the leaks uh, that were going around and then I said well I gotta read up a little bit about England as well there was this book about uh, well, a lot of short stories that tell the story of English soccer after the war but not as a historically um, feature but more of like to represent the culture and I wish I had the book now here and I was reading this uh, you know I had my office in Vienna at the university I was reading this um, at work I was a little bit at home just you know one or two stories and I almost made it through the entire book uh, the last chapter is the Premier League I never made it there because the last chapter before that is the Hillsborough chapter which shocked me to the core honestly this was um, the story told of a police officer who went there as a Liverpool fan. Uh, he had some semi-official function, but not really, but he could see, he was standing on the side and he could see what was happening. And I think his two daughters were going to that game. Of course, they were killed. Uh, and me having a better moment, one daughter, now I have two. Uh, I'm not sure if I, uh, I would be in that situation, but it hit me hard. And then I watched, I found it on YouTube and maybe I find it again and I link up there. I, I absolutely great ESPN 30 for 30 documentary called Hillsborough. It's a two hour documentary. I watched it. It's a great documentary, but I cannot watch it again. You see dead people in that one. You see the crush. Um, yeah, those are pictures that still haunt me now. They haunt me again. Um, but it tells the entire story of Hillsborough and what a disaster that was. And I actually feel, you feel with the people that were affected by that. Uh, I'm tearing up even a little bit now. Um, you know, it changed my perspective on Liverpool as a club as well, because this is a big scar. Yes, they cause trouble. Uh, the Hazel disaster is entirely on Liverpool fans. But Liverpool was not the only team. I think actually Chelsea that they played together today today was one of the worst uh, teams in terms of hooliganism. But that's beside the point. Uh, what that documentary clearly showed is the attitude 
of the police towards the fans, the ineptitude of the police handling this, the long search for justice, which I don't think is still uh, done. Uh, yes, they have. it has been now officially um, acknowledged that this was a failure of the police, uh, but this doesn't bring back the people and uh, the punishments were spoken, they are still not enough, I think there is still injustice there. And that Liverpool is basically lifting itself, uh, uh, hanging on those. I mean, that community is still hanging on there. Then also the despicable nature of the sun. I think it was the sun. It was a daily mirror. Um, let me check that. Yes, it was the sun. Um, I remembered correctly. Uh, with them telling the truth and blaming the fans and this was still, I know, it was because of the Hazel fact and the entire attitude. Football, like how soccer was a working man's game and there was still this class thing. Those are the animals from below there. And that's how the fans were treated actually. <sighs> we have come a long way since then. Uh, although I have to say that um, recent experiences in Austria or even when I was you know in the 90s uh, a traveling fan 90s early 2000s I can easily see shit happening here as well because um, while things are a lot more secure this attitude especially among the police exists and I can tell you that when I was traveling away I was always happy that the Lask fan club had their own police unit. They usually have two or three policemen uh, that were kind of fan coordinators from a really elite unit. They were always there to actually make the contact with the local authorities over there. So um, that was always a factor that made me feel safer. I'm not sure how big it was, but I think that uh, it was a contributing factor to that things were a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, in that documentary it became pretty clear that the police absolutely mishandled that one and that people were treated like animals. Um, even to the fact that when it was clear that there were, four, I think, 4,000 in the sector where there should be only 2,000, they're not even opening gates or doing anything. Uh, the game went on. Uh, Unbelievable. And then there's one uh, emergency car. It's an absolute, absolute, absolute disaster what happened there. And I mean, I don't need to tell you how big of a disaster it was. It's clear that this was an absolutely uh, horrid tragedy. Um, again, it was 25 years later after the fact that I watched this documentary and it absolutely hit me. I still, I cannot forget those pictures. And yeah, today it hit me again. Um, and I just wanted to draw a little bit of attention, share my personal feeling with that. Um, it was a really impactful thing. I don't know if the Taylor report, they said it should be all-seaters and so on. And, you know, this enabled the Premier League with the all-seater stadiums, pricing out the working class, which not necessarily is a solution, but, you know, it's now big business. Clubs are thinking nowadays of visitors to the stadium as guests, as customers. You have an entirely different uh, mind shift, especially in England. I'm not saying that this is not necessarily true for um, other countries, but in England for sure. Um, but it, if this wouldn't have happened, I think we would still have a, a different stadium culture. Uh, so for that moment, it's probably one of the most impactful catastrophes. I also want to say it, I never want to say it was a good thing, but um, the good thing is that it happened in England, which is seen as a civilized country where the discussion got started. Um, I would like to see a similar discussion happening right now in Italy, where if you look at their stadiums, they just don't look good. I think a lot of stuff need to happen in Italy there because Italy has problems. They are trying to address it. It's not going to go anywhere. Of course, it would be nice to see something uh, like that also addressed in Argentina, which is also a time bomb waiting to happen, uh, waiting to explode. Uh, 
just the Libertadores final, I think, should be uh, uh, enough indication. But I think there are a lot of countries that still have to learn from that. But uh, it is a prime example of how you can deal with it. I'm not sure if they drew the absolutely right conclusions, especially in the immediate aftermath. Nowadays, people are a little bit more aware, but I don't think we will roll back to stadiums where it is uh, safer. Um, it's also interesting for me personally when I went to an American football game, an NFL game, or you know any sporting event in America, how different the culture is there because um, it, there is more an event culture. And I think soccer that was more like, um, especially in England, a working man's pastime that you went there. There was some sort of tribalism in there, but it was uh, but, uh, very much over the top something that doesn't exist in America, at least that much. I mean, in America, you will get bad companies or so on, but you hardly ever will get beaten up over uh, a match. Uh, so, yeah. I think due to Hillsborough, we moved more in the American direction, for better or worse. Well, I'm not sure how coherent the whole thing was. I just thought I need to share my thoughts on the 30 years of Hillsborough. My gut reaction is that much more punishment should be given to the police, but I know this is also a tricky issue. Uh, I'm not saying at all, I'm not in any way against the police. I think the police, properly schooled, can help avoid such things. But um, from personal experience, I know that even in Austria, um, I could well imagine Austria happening something like that, especially in Vienna, with the way the things are going, uh, which is an entire other issue. I think we will see something happening uh, in Italy or the Balkans like that as well, but then it will be also, yeah, those are the crazy Balkans, that's Southern Europe. Um, so for that reason, yeah, I'm not sure if we learned all the right lessons from it. Anyway, let me know what you thought But my thoughts here. As I said, it touched me deeply. When I saw this documentary, which is a great documentary, I read up on it. I'm not saying I'm an effort expert, but I'm no problem more than the average football fan, and it abhors me in every regard. Again, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I will give you my thoughts on the games that I watched today and uh, other things um, about my jersey collection back there, and uh, you know. Gonna do a big roundup of this week's results. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I wanna wish you a wonderful day.